There was a general feeling of unease in the West and, and certainly in, in Britain and in London, the communities that I were part of, we had a sense for a long time something was going to happen. I mean, Iraq was a humongous issue. It was everywhere. It permeated every aspect of society. You couldn't walk down the street without seeing an Iraq war poster, an you know, anti-Iraq war poster. We knew it was going to be absolutely huge because um, you know, you know from the numbers of coaches that are being booked, from people phoning up from tiny villages in the West Country and saying we've got two coaches coming from places that have never ever sent a car to a demonstration before. I remember standing behind the student banner, surrounded by you know tens of thousands of students, all chanting in unison. It was incredible. It was absolutely incredible. I had my face painted with the Stop the War logo on it, and I was surrounded by a lot of my friends and a lot of other students. The day we got there, about 30 of us started, and because we were stuck at Gower Street for so long, we started singing, and we were singing quite traditional, quite 1960s influenced protest songs that people could join in on. We were singing Step by Step, The Longest March, Can Be One. Many stones to form an arch. Many stones to form an arch, singly none. Really rich poor, old, young, right wing, left wing, no wing, everybody was on that march. And I was at the head of the, uh, of the one coming from the embankment. They met at Piccadilly Circus as the northern one came down Shaftesbury Avenue. And I remember looking over, I was on the front banner of the one coming up uh, from the embankment and Tarek Ali was on the one coming down from, uh, and there was this just, I mean, it, it wasn't a chant. It was just this kind of howl, I mean, an enormous noise reverberating around the buildings as the two marches came together and went down to Hyde Park. When we reached Hyde Park, there was a great sense of camaraderie and of, of strength and optimism. There genuinely was this air, and you could feel it, that there was this air of optimism. But there was a feeling, and I remember it well, of intense frustration that only half a million people could get into Hyde Park. The, the country was not unanimously against it. We mustn't sort of romanticise this march and say it was the whole nation. It was somewhere between one and two million people, amazing as that is. The overwhelming majority of people who were on that march were not only morally opposed to the war but scared of it, that it would open up a different level of danger on their streets. On Tuesday night I gave the order for British forces to take part in military action in Iraq. Hugely disappointing, profoundly, emotionally devastating. That's how serious it was for a lot of people. I put my heart and soul, and so many people put their heart and soul into the anti-war movement to show, to show the world and to show our government that we were not interested, we did not believe in this war, and yet we weren't listened to. For me as a political animal and a community artist, I saw people fall away from direct action from that point, from making their displeasure known because, understandably, they turn around and say, well, what good did it do us? There's a slightly sort of pantomime view of what should have happened, you know, that we should have run up from one side of the stage waving the stop the wall placard and then all the people in black hats and toilet and fashion would have run off the other side instantaneously. I never thought that was quite how it would work. Had we succeeded in stopping the Iraq war, it would have been a turning point in history. I mean, it would have been massively empowering. But no, the marchers, I think, all of their concerns have largely been borne out by history. Afghanistan, Iraq, Libya, Mali now, look at the opinion polls, the same figures that we were getting over, over at that day and that march. And it did in the end break Tony Blair's premiership. If we were to maybe launch another big campaign, for instance against Iran, uh, that, that we could probably mobilise all of that again. Maybe, maybe even bring in that radical element from, from the students of today. It's still this great feeling that the country has spoken. We cannot be ignored.